Greg Allen here, and I am excited that we can finally launch the Irvington Incubator. This is a series that we've been talking about for the past year, where songwriters, playwrights, um, screenwriters, any artist can come together and discuss and share what they've been working on. We can also have some outsiders come in and watch too, only right now this summer we're not going to be able to be in the theater, so we'll be doing it via Zoom. I want to start with something that I've been working on and share a little bit of that with you. So like all of us, 2020 has been a very rough year and really so for filmmakers who just had a new film come out and it's yet to make its premiere. Yes, eight months ago in September, we filmed Reparations and then it went through the post-production phase and then we entered it into film festivals and started getting accepted. And we were very excited in spring to get accepted and then not one of them has gone through even though we've gotten into a dozen film festivals. So in order to stay creative, I thought there's gotta be something else I could work on that I could do. I called together the two actors from the film. Now they haven't worked on these characters in eight months. We got on a Zoom call and they presented what I'm gonna be showing you, kind of a sequel to our story, or just, it could actually be another story. Just a story of two people and how they're surviving during this quarantine. I really appreciate Ed and Nefertiti coming together to do this with little to no rehearsal, just us getting to see each other's faces again on Zoom and record it. So I hope you enjoy. Howard, you're still muted. You're still muted. Oh, hey. <laughs> you would think I'd have gotten this down by now. <laughs> well, I'm in no hurry. Where am I going to go? I almost made you a cup of tea as well. You were always so good at knowing exactly when to pour oh. mine so that it would be cooled off by the time I drank it. Any news yet on the teaching job? It's not the best time to be trying to get a job. That means I get you a little longer. <laughs> You'll get someone just as good as me to fill my shoes. I find that very impossible. So, how's that pill case look this week? Completely full, all ready for next week. Yeah, Howard, that's a great job. I don't even think you need me helping you do this. Oh, maybe I should have missed a day. Then you would think I was losing it. <laughs> you are the sharpest older man that I know. Lonely older man. I know. I know, but it's so much safer that you live in your own place, you know, especially during these times. I love when I see your face leaving the groceries on my porch. And I am happy to do it. I think I almost forgot what gr grocery store looks like. Well. Not much has changed, except for markings on the floor, lots of face masks, and some sections are pretty empty. Masks, the new fashion statement. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh, so many people are complaining about what we've all had to give up now in order to live like this through the pandemic until you shared a wooden slat with 10 other men to sleep on. And I use the word sleep lightly. Or worked all day 
all day in a labor camp doing hard labor only to be given a slice of moldy bread at night when all is done. To listen to that people having trouble going to a movie now. I cannot listen to that. You know, my professor thought your Holocaust stories took my reparations paper to a new level. And I just want to say I appreciate you for being so open and honest with me about it all. Those talks made me view the world in a completely different way. I never thought of my checks from Germany being reparations. Hey, how did you feel when those protesters in Illinois used the slogan that hung over Auschwitz? If Americans sitting on their couch, binging on Netflix, want to compare it to that, that's persecution sickness. Preach, preach, okay? <laughs> oh, well, of all the time I answered the questions in those interviews, is it my turn? Oh, sure. What do you want to know? When did you know you didn't like men? Well, I never said that I didn't like men. I like you just fine. Well, you know what I mean. Well, I knew I connected to women in a different way than men in high school. But I never put a label on it. Oh, today's generation hates labels. Um, <laughs> do you really want to throw stones about what people are called? Ouch. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, of course. It seems teen years is when people like to experiment. Uh, well, mine went beyond experimenting. I mean, I tried to date guys as well, but it never really worked out. I can't believe all those years you helping me that I didn't know that about you. Well, maybe it's what drew you to me without even knowing. Do you have a special someone? Yes. <laughs> Anisha is her name, and she's in the other room now. Oh, so do. <laughs> do I get to meet her someday? Well, you know, I told her you were like the grandfather that I never had. I wonder what it would be like to have grandkids. My wife and I, we just didn't let it come up. I, the 50s, 50s were a different time than today. And all our friends had children, but we would just gloss over it. You know, I never had any grandparents growing up. It was just me and mom. But being an only child was pretty lonely. So be happy you didn't have just a single child. Well, you've done very well yourself. Work. That someone special. And now a graduate with a master's. And you will be teaching young minds <laughs> from your mouth to god's ears well i have a pretty direct connection with him i will put in a good word for you do you think the things you saw at such a young age during the holocaust change your views on having children oh isn't that an interesting question hmm which I've never thought of. Hmm. Well, you know, that master's degree has to come in handy at times. Perhaps in the back of my mind somewhere that maybe not wanting to bring a child into this world. 
you were so young yourself when you went in and and seeing those younger than you attempting to survive i mean i honestly can't even imagine you told me once that you tried to have a child was that with your do you say girlfriend yes i do say girlfriend but no not with her I was being rebellious when I was 18 and thought I'd show my mom by getting pregnant, but it didn't take. Kamsulo mm. Tafaha, this too is good. What? You weren't old enough to be a parent. Everything works out the way it's supposed to. I suppose so. You know, I like these check-ins, Howard. It keeps me connected to you. When your angels on wheels sent you to me, I had no idea how close we would become. You, you are Oh, you don't even need to finish that sentence. I feel the exact same way. Um, same time tomorrow? Um, I'm looking forward. <laughs> Mwah!